At MIT Solve, we find and support promising social entrepreneurs with solutions to pressing global challenges. In 2021, thanks to our partners, we have over $2 million in funding for Solver teams, plus access to MIT's innovation ecosystem and the Solve community. We are looking for our next class of innovators tackling one of these five global challenges. Challenge one, digital inclusion. More than half of the global population remains disconnected from the online world, unable to digitally access jobs, trainings, and markets. Connecting the rest of the world could add $6.7 trillion to the economy and lift 500 million people out of poverty. How can everyone have access to the digital economy? Challenge two, health security and pandemics. The world was unprepared for COVID-19 with more than 2 million lives lost to the pandemic and underserved populations hit the hardest. To reduce the risk of future threats, we must address the weaknesses in our health systems. How can communities prepare for, detect, and respond to emerging pandemics and health security threats? Challenge three, equitable classrooms. An estimated 1.5 billion primary and secondary learners have had their education disrupted by the pandemic. This exacerbates pre-existing inequalities around wealth, gender, linguistics, ethnic and geographic lines. How can all young learners have access to quality, safe and equitable learning environments? Challenge four, resilient ecosystems. Humans have degraded over 75% of the Earth's land area. Functioning ecosystems are the backbone of society and they are in dire need of restoration and preservation. How can communities sustainably protect, manage and restore their local ecosystems? Challenge five, anti-racist technology in the US. Black, indigenous, and people of color in the US have created resilient and culturally rich communities despite centuries of institutionalized racism and oppression. The pandemic and a new wave of harmful technologies have further exacerbated disparities in the US. How can communities of color use technology to advance racial equity and access economic opportunity, health, and safety? If you have tech-based solution to one of these challenges, you could be one of our next solar teams. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of Solve at MIT. I'm Hala Hanna, Managing Director of Community at MIT Solve. And we're here today because we all share in the belief that to solve the complex challenges of our time, we need to harness the ingenuity of problem solvers everywhere, particularly those closest to the issues in their community. Yesterday, we gathered to celebrate our 2020 solver teams who are working on the most promising solutions to maternal and newborn health, good jobs and inclusive entrepreneurship, sustainable food systems, health security and pandemics, and learning for girls and women. We spent the day in interactive brain trust, hearing about all the progress and partnerships unfolding around the 2020 global challenges. That's all thanks to you, to the Solve community. We also heard from Will I Am, Nubar Afayan, and Wanjira Matai, who've thrown their talent at dealing with urgent problems like algorithmic bias, the COVID-19 vaccine, and sustainable food systems. Today, we are focused on our 2021 global challenges. You just heard more about them in the opening video and they're open for submissions until June 16th. So please consider applying and refer others to apply to. Like you heard yesterday from Michael Running Wolf, 2020 Indigenous Fellow, this is the type of funding that's the difference between preserving a language or losing it. Uh, for other solvers, it's the difference between being able to reach an additional village with primary care service, I can go on. So I will let our current partners tell you more about each of the 2021 prizes in the next video. And after that, you'll get to hear from Eric Yuan, the founder and CEO of Zoom. 
We've all been working and learning and dating and having drinks over the Zoom for over a year. So for our digital inclusion challenge, we just couldn't think who anyone would be better suited to serve as our ambassador. A few logistics before I let you go. Throughout the day, we'll be launching polls. Please have fun and share your responses. We want to hear from you. And if you're posting about Sovet MIT on social media, please use the hashtag Sovet MIT. If you're new to our event platform, hop in or you have any technical question, uh, go to the reception page. You'll find help there. All right, that's everything for now. Uh, and in the words of yesterday's speaker, Will I Am, let's get it started. Hello from Detroit. What an exciting day. GM has been involved with MIT Saw for the past few years, and we are delighted to be continuing our partnership this year. I'm very excited to announce the GM prizes for the MIT Saw 2021 challenges, providing $150,000 in funding for solver teams across the following three challenges, technology for US racial equity, resilient ecosystems, and equitable classrooms. Supporting these challenges aligns with our efforts to build a diverse STEM pipeline and provide opportunities to underrepresented populations. And as part of our vision for the future, becoming the most inclusive company in the world. My name is Ron Guerrier. I'm the global CIO for HP Inc. And I'm excited to announce the prize for advancing digital equity, which is open to solutions that advance inclusion, digital literacy, and economic opportunity in communities across the United States and globally. Up to $100,000 will be granted to up to four recipients from the anti-racist technology in the U.S. and digital inclusion challenges. By unleashing innovations that close the digital divide and help us become a more anti-racist society, we will help everyone and all businesses thrive. This is something that we're myopically focused here at HP, and I'm excited to work on this program together with MIT Salt. Hi, I'm June Sugiyama, Director of Vodafone America's Foundation. And this will be the third year of partnering with the MIT Sol for the Innovation for Women Prize. We're supporting the Innovation in Women's Prize because we know that technological innovation can make an impact for issues around the world. Our past solver teams are already making incredible change, and I look forward to the next set of solvers. Hi, I'm Carolina Garcia Jairam, and I am the Executive Director of the Elevate Prize Foundation, and we are funding the Elevate Prize for Anti-Racist Technology. The Elevate Prize is thrilled to partner with Solve for a second year. We are firm believers in the impact that MIT Solve has on the success of these Solver teams, and we are honored to play a small role in supporting that. Hi, I'm Lori Melliker from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We are so excited to be funding the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Prize to uncover solutions that directly address the health and well-being of people in the United States. We are excited to support the Solve community and their efforts to ensure that technologies that we all use throughout our daily lives don't encode systemic racism, but rather dismantle it in obvious and unexpected ways. Greetings. My name is Mara Simwensha, Head of Supply Chain for the Global Fund. We're so thrilled to be here today as we come together to find innovative solutions to address the challenges we face in global health. As part of the Health, Security, and Pandemics Challenge, we are looking for solutions to support community-led monitoring of supply chain services. We look forward to your submissions and good luck. I'm Elisa Wilkie, and I'm the Vice President of Strategy and Innovation for American Student Assistance, and I'm excited to fund the ASA Prize for Equitable Education. We're looking for digital solutions that provide career exploration and experimentation tailored to U.S.-based primary and secondary classrooms. My name is Chris Kalin. I'm the founder and chairman of the Andon Foundation in Switzerland. And we proudly support the Andon Prize for innovation in refugee inclusion. My name is Dav Cerné. I'm with ServiceNow, and we're sponsoring a prize of $100,000 for the Resilient Ecosystems Challenge. 
By funding this prize, we will not only be able to help accelerate decarbonization, but we will also be able to make an impact to local communities. The Mindrew Foundation is proudly Australian and one of Asia's largest philanthropies with $2 billion committed to a range of global initiatives. Our purpose is to tackle some of the world's toughest problems. We are excited to fund the Mindrew Foundation Prize to end overfishing as we believe in the power of technology to create transformative change. Hi, I'm Eric Yuan, founder and CEO of Zoom. I'm very proud of being an ambassador of MIT Solve program. Unfortunately, I cannot join Solve at MIT event in person, but I can join virtually with the great MIT campus as a virtual background. So today's world is digital economy. And as, as we are embracing digital economy, digital inclusion is, is extremely important. But we really want to make sure everyone has access to the very affordable and reliable connectivity to embrace digital economy. When it comes to digital inclusion, we need more innovations. I might be thought program and truly have that in terms of funding, in terms of customized help, because we have a great you know, community members who can truly help. So when it comes to innovation, quite often if you start from a grassroots you know, perspective, you will see a lot of very innovative ideas. We need all those innovative technology solutions to have low income community rural areas who may not have access you know, to the digital economy. We need everyone to involve. We, we need to have a true partnership from industry to from uh, educational institutions from government, we've got to work together to come up with some very sustainable, innovative ideas to truly help. When it comes to future working model, I truly believe hybrid will be the mainstream. A lot of people, they are going to work anywhere with any device. There's no any productivity loss. However, how to embrace this digital transformation how to make sure everyone, whenever they want to have access you know, to the digital economy, we need to make sure we can support those who may not have the digital access. Yeah, for every you know, entrepreneur, especially are thinking about how to have a social impact, I would say, first of all, you got to embrace this uh, digital inclusion. Always think about what you can do differently to help the world, to help those people who may not have access you know, into this world. So any innovation from anywhere can truly help us. Please submit your ideas to MIT Solve Global Challenges Program. We are going to help you to achieve your dream to help the world. Thank you to our prize funders. This is the marketplace, alive with partnerships and resources for our innovators. And thank you, Eric. Great Zoom background diplomacy there. Up next, we will be joined by Sara Montelbaro, Director of Strategic and Partner Programs at Solve, for a conversation on digital skills and edtech in Asia and exciting new partner challenge launches. For context, in addition to our global challenges, Solve works with our partners year-round to launch custom partner challenges. Custom challenges give Solve partners the opportunity to design a challenge specific to their thematic area of interest, geography, or timeline, leveraging Solve's open innovation platform, methodology, and community. 
You may have seen our challenge on digital identity with the World Bank, the Elevate Prize to Make Good Famous, or the Horizon Prize for Rare Diseases. Uh, we've hosted over 20 partner challenges in four languages with millions in funding committed to challenge winners across the globe. To tell you more about our newest custom challenges launching in Asia, please welcome Sarah Montealbaro in conversation with Asha Varghese, Rahman Sidhu, and 2017 solver Iman Uzman. Welcome to Solve It MIT. My name is Sarah Montabaro, and I'm the Director of Strategic and Partner Programs at MIT Solve. Today, we're discussing topics ranging from preparing uh, for the workforce of the future to digital skills development and ed tech innovation, all within the Asia region. I'm delighted to introduce our panelists. First, we're, we'll hear from Asha Varghese president of the Caterpillar Foundation, and Raman Sitchu, regional director for Asia at the Octiva Foundation. We'll then talk to one of our solver teams, Iman Usman, co-founder and chief of product and partnership at Rurang Guru. I'll turn it over to Asha and Raman to start, who both have exciting announcements to share with the Solve at MIT community. Asha, why don't you kick us off first? Sounds good. Thank you, Sarah. Hello, Saul at MIT. Asha Verghese, president of the Caterpillar Foundation. I'm delighted to be here today to announce the launch of the Caterpillar Foundation's challenge on the future of work in India and Indonesia. As we think about the future of work across all sectors, we see a workplace that is much more digitally focused and technologically dependent. We know workers at every level will need to be digitally literate to thrive in the workplace. The Caterpillar Foundation is partnering with MIT Solve to identify and support innovative workforce development solutions that can support the digital upskilling and reskilling of the workforce. The challenge is open to anyone from around the world who would like to contribute solutions that will meet the demands of the workforce of the future in India and Indonesia. We are so inspired by the incredible innovators and entrepreneurs here today and hope that those of you who are working in India and Indonesia will get involved with the challenge and complete the application on the Solve's open innovation platform. Happy solving, everyone. Thanks so much, Asha. We are thrilled to be partnering with the Caterpillar Foundation on this partnership. And Raman, I know you have another exciting announcement to share, so over to you. Pleasure. Thank you for having us here today. Um, I'm Raman, as Sarah introduced. Um, I'm part of the Octiva Foundation. We're a foundation based out of Singapore. And we recently started our expedition for impact in Southeast Asia. So we're super excited to be partnering with MIT Solve um, to run and design um, a, a challenge uh, which will run over two years. Um, we're cu currently calling it Tech for Education, essentially just to say we're interested in technological solutions that are solving for education. Um, we hope to be um, finding innovative solutions in the sector, in the space. Um, and at the same time, we're also um, not looking at Southeast Asia as a whole, but really zoning into a select five Southeast Asian countries and see what the local innovation there is and how probably some of the international solutions can come in and play their part. Um, so yeah, so we're really super excited about this um, and equitable quality education has been on everybody's agenda for forever. And I think the pandemic has really created a new impetus for this. So we're really excited about what we find. That's fantastic. We are thrilled to be working with you on this endeavor. And while we're talking about quality education, the Octava Foundation works to support economically underserved children and youth in Singapore. And now that you are about to embark on expanding your work to five new countries in the Southeast Asia region with MIT Solve, I'm wondering if you can talk a bit about why you've chosen to focus on ed tech solutions mm -hmm. to power this work. So that's an exciting that's an exciting landscape for us at this stage. Um, the foundation was set up, as you know, Sarah, in about 2017. Um, and since our inception, most of our work has been focusing in Singapore on enabling um, programs that were working through the education continuum, but also looking at transition to work. Um, and as we were designing our work for Asia in the pandemic, you know, as they say, never, never lose a good crisis. Um, we were really thinking deeply about what future of education would look like. 
um, not just education as, as a broad term, but what would future of learning look like? What would future of teaching look like? What would, what would future of skills development look like as we come past the pandemic, hopefully really soonest? Um, and in that context, we started doing um, this kind of landscape review of the locations that we wanted to, to be in. Um, and there is a tremendous amount of ed tech entrepreneurship at display in Southeast Asia. Um, but we also realize most of this is serving what we call an affordable plus market, wherein in Southeast Asia, and, and you're all familiar with the, the context of the middle income developing countries, 60% of all K-12 learners um, are actually in the affordable minus market. And most of these are served through the public education system. And in that context, I think lies the, the challenge and the opportunities. So we, we are really excited to be embarking on this with MIT to really help us find and scale solutions that are ambitious, that are pedagogically sound, and are really willing to work on this disadvantage gap in education that exists in Southeast Asia. Thank you so much, Raman. We are just as excited as you are. And Asha, I know that the Caterpillar Foundation's challenge focuses on preparing for the workforce of the future in India and Indonesia. And as a global company, why do you choose these regions in particular? And in your opinion, what is at risk if we don't implement lasting digital skills solutions during this period of transformation? Yeah, no, thank you for that, Sarah. What an important question. Um, I think if I just take a step back on Caterpillar Foundation and our focus, it's really about building resilient communities and uh, sustainable communities. And one of the ways in which we're looking to do that is investing in the workforce and workforce development programs. So um, that's really what's bringing us to the table in um, looking at opportunities in the skills gap, not just of today's skills gap, but also looking at the future skills gap. And I think we all know that um, we're living in a, a digitally driven economy. And hence, in that case, in looking at the skills gap that we have, much of studies have been done that shows that uh, if we don't address this right now, um, we are potentially looking at a failure mode of where we would see much increased amount of unemployability or um, or there's an inequity in income gap. So to answer your last question first, um, it's, it's so critical for us to be able to address that today. Um, and hence, we need to act now. And that brings us to uh, partnering with an entity like MIT Solve to help identify um, some of those entrepreneurs that are specifically focused in the digital skills market and helping us um, identify solutions both in Indi India and Indonesia. I think what's fascinating to us is that, you know, Caterpillar as a company focuses across the manufacturing sector, whether that's mining or construction or energy. And uh, to Today we produce tech-enabled solutions and also focus on reskilling and upskilling our own operators to be able to enable them for that workforce environment. And that really provides them with an opportunity to um, enhance their skills, but also position them for a better future. So we, at the foundation, we want to bring that same focus, but at a at a diverse skills pipeline level to be able to identify some of these um, opportunities and really be able to address that in partnership with entities like MIT Sol. So now you had asked why India and Indonesia. Um, Caterpillars had a longstanding presence in both countries um, over uh, more than 15 thousand employees across both countries uh, between us and our dealers. And uh, we strongly believe in investing in communities where we live, work, and play. So um, hence our focus in both of these countries where we've had uh, longstanding investments, uh, investments on uh, development challenges. Um, but also when you look at the markets, I think as uh, Raman mentioned, these are, these are places that are growing from a global economy perspective. And um, you're seeing more and more of the digital innovations in that space. So um, it's, it's really an opportunity for us to be able to look at where the gaps are in both of these countries to really enable uh, the workforce there and prepare them for that future of work. 
Thank you both so very much. I am inspired by the direction of both of your foundations and am so looking forward to be partnering with you on both of these challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, we're very excited. And now I would like to introduce Iman Uzman, co-founder of Ranguru. So Iman, you were selected as a solver back in 2017 in the Youth Skills in the Workforce of the Future Challenge. Tell the audience, what is Ranguru and how has your work progressed since joining the Solve community nearly four years ago? Oh, um, thank you so much. It's really an honor to be here. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ivan. I'm co-founder of Ranguru. So for those of you who are not familiar with our work, Ranguru is the largest online education platform in Southeast Asia. Uh, we're basically delivering uh, quality educational content to the masses through our app and um, and our website, so people can access different videos, quizzes, study notes, and all other learning formats, uh, ranging from K to 12 to professional. Um, so um, since 2017, since we applied to Solve, we have evolved uh, in so many ways. Uh, I think one thing for sure, we stay true with our mission to enable better access to quality education. Uh, I think when we applied to Solve at the time, we only have served about 3 million people, and now we've been serving over 22 million uh, people. Um, we launched a new vertical that was inspired uh, by our soft challenge, which is to improve employability. It's called Skill Academy, and it has enabled job seekers and workers um, around the country to access high quality uh, employable skills. Um, I think so far we have um, supported over 4 million people at the workplace in which um, 30,000 of them receive intensive mentoring to help them land a job or um, set up a small business. And I think one thing that um, was exciting for us is that 66% of them have been able to get a job or continue uh, their studies to higher education only in three months after they complete the program. So I think we've been able to iterate um, a lot in terms of um, how we do the interventions. Uh, in addition to that, um, we also have, uh, we, we're also staying to remain uh, closely working with our donors, which are Atlassian and Defat. So they've been a great supporter even until um, today. Um, and, and, and we have, as a company, we have grown so much. So. Uh, I think at the time we only had like 200 people in the company. Now we have 4,000 employees. We have raised over $200 million in funding um, to support our mission. And um, we expanded um, geographically to Vietnam and Thailand. And recently we were um, included in the top 25 of fast company, what's most innovative companies in the world, which is actually quite an exciting um, state. Um, it's the first time for Indonesian company to be listed on the list. So. So, so much have, um, has happened and I can't thank enough of um, the, you know, all the supports um, you know, um, and assistance that SOL community has provided to us. Well, it sounds like you've been quite busy and we're incredibly proud of the work that you've done. So tell me a little bit more, let's take a step back maybe and think about the Indonesian context specifically that you work in and that Ronguru was really uh, created specifically to address some of the challenges there. Tell us about what are some of the current technology and innovation needs that you see currently within the Indonesian context? Um, so to give a bit of context, so Indonesia is the fourth largest education system globally. We have over 50 million students in K-12, but also, we're also one of the lowest performer. Um, so if you look at PISA, teams or other international measurements, we've always been performing um, at the bottom. And um, quality education and access to education has always been an issue. And therefore, uh, innovative solutions that leverage the use of technology uh, will always be critical to um, help us get the quality education to the masses. Uh, one of the things that we have been um, exploring is the use of artificial intelligence um, to personalize um, education. So to ensure that you know, no matter where you are, no matter where your background is, uh, you will uh, always get a personalized learning that is adjusted to your goal and to your situation. Um, in addition to that, we also have been trying to uh, bring our solutions to offline as well. So yes, in one way we go high tech, but another way we also think about how can we reduce the barrier to entry so that people can access um, this easily and affordably. So you just heard that we have two new challenges that will be opening across the Asia region. What advice do you have per, for prospective applicants for these new innovation challenges? I think um, just to look around because I think there are a lot of problems around us. And sometimes we think that to solve those problems, we needed a fancy solution. In some cases, yes, but 
I think for most cases, not necessarily. I think the solution that we pitched to solve is very simple. We wanted to help, you know, um, unemployed and, and, and people who are underprivileged to graduate from high school because that's just a necessity for them to apply for a job. And we really focus on that and, 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 and it helped us to, to, you know, to, to fulfill our mission. So I think at the end of the day, your impact lies in your execution. So keep exploring. Don't be too fixated with your initial ideas. Um, always open up yourself with um, experimentations because we have reported for multiple times, even until now. And, and, and yeah, you just never know um, what, um, what could happen. So, so, so keep exploring, keep searching, um, keep asking uh, the right question to the right people. Thank you so much, Iman. That's all the time that we have for today. Thank you to our panelists. It's been a pleasure to be with you. And best of luck to the Solve at MIT community. Thank you, Asha, Rahman, Iman, and Sarah. We have one more announcement for this plenary. Our newest round of investment from our philanthropic venture fund, Solve Innovation Future. Solve Innovation Future is held as a donor advised fund to invest directly in solver teams in founder friendly ways. Joining us to announce this newest round of investees is Casey Vanderstrick, principal of Solve Innovation Future. Welcome, Casey. Thank you, Hala. Last year at Solve at MIT, I had the pleasure of announcing our first Solve Innovation Future investees. We launched Solve Innovation Future because we are committed to pursuing innovative ways to use philanthropic and commercial capital to advance the work of our solver teams. And it's working. We're moving capital, we're seeing returns from our first investments, and we're catalyzing millions in additional funding to our portfolio. This year, I'm thrilled to have the chance to announce our next round of investees. We've invested in these teams because of their outsized potential for impact and their strong business fundamentals. First up, 2020 Sustainable Food System Solver, Exit. 2020 Good Job and Inclusive Entrepreneurship Solver, Someone Somewhere. 2018 Teachers and Educators Solver, Century. 2019 Circular Economy Solver, El Gramo. Congratulations to these remarkable teams. To meet these entrepreneurs and to learn more about their amazing tech-based solutions, join the Solve Innovation Future Investor Showcase this afternoon at 1 p.m. Thank you, Casey. Solver teams still mention capital as the binding constraint to scaling, uh, and we are committed to pursuing creative ways to use capital to help them advance their work. And it is so satisfying to be able to participate in that growth by investing directly in them. So, well, everyone, this brings us to the end of our opening plenary. For all of you who are on the live stream, I hope you're inspired and thinking about ways you want to get involved, whether by applying to one of our open challenges, serving as a mentor, becoming a member, or donating to Cutting Edge Philanthropy. I'll see you back here at 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time for the Soviet MIT closing plenary. Do not miss it. There is Gene Case, so many other speakers. For our Solve members in Hop In, get ready for our interactive 2021 challenge sessions, which you can find on the sessions tab. This is gonna be your opportunity to dive deeper into the new challenge topics, hear from expert leaders, and then discuss in groups your take on how to solve these challenges. You'll then have some time for networking. And at 1 p.m. Eastern time, you'll have a chance to join one of our four community sessions our Solvet session to discuss our new program for people aged 24 and under, the Solve Innovation Future Innovation Showcase to meet our newest investees, the Indigenous Communities Brain Trust with our eight 2020 Indigenous Fellows, and a session on a future that works for everyone with great speakers from APCO, Wiley, and ADECO. Enjoy, connect, create change, and I'll see you back there later. <laughs>